but to go over all the financial uh, news here with us is Max Kaiser, who's also the uh, inventor of the Hollywood Stock Exchange Virtual Trading System. He's a virtual specialist uh, technology inventor used on many of the stock exchanges worldwide, maxkaiser.com. Max, b before you go any further, though, your rant that we linked up to Saturday on Infowars.com when you were on International RT, where you have a show, but you were a guest, breaking down, and I'd seen this in the news, but billions and billions, uh, they say seven to ten billion, of Gaddafi's money invested with the big banks, he even got some of the bailout money we now learn, has disappeared, and, and of course they, they said no ground invasion, they said the bombs were love bombs and kinetic, uh, now we know ground troops are there. Uh, so, so break down where the banksters are right now and uh, what they're up to. Well, it all goes back to, uh, yeah, by the way, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, it, all, it all goes back to uh, 2004, if you remember, Tony Blair was over in uh, Libya and making nice nice with Gaddafi and bring, welcoming him back to the world community, and he was going to uh, dismantle his weapons of uh, terror. And at that time, Tony Blair was still the prime minister of uh, Britain, uh, but he already had his eye on his post prime ministerial job, which was to join the board of directors of J.P. Morgan, which he now is part of J.P. Morgan. He started that job on the second week after leaving Number 10 Downing Street. But back in 2004, when he's in Libya, he's already basically setting the table for these banksters to come in, like uh, Goldman Sachs and Society General, who, incidentally, those two banks got huge bailout money during the 2008 bailout period. So Tony Blair set the table, he set up the deals, and then we left uh, his the job as Prime Minister of Britain. He went into the revolving door. He starts to um, make introductions. And, uh, of course, Libya has this huge sovereign wealth fund that they accumulated being in the oil business. And Goldman Sachs swoops in there, and they say, yeah, we'll manage, we'll manage part of this business, a uh, billion dollar or more of the business. And they managed to blow through 98% of that account by just spinning the sovereign wealth fund as any of these banksters do when they get a hold of large chunks of money. So they engaged in weapons of mass financial destruction and they blew a billion dollars of that money. Uh, also here in France, Society Generale, uh, they got a hold of a billion dollars. They lost 75, 80 percent of that money churning and burning, uh, doing trades and engage, and at the same time getting bailout money from all the so they uh, made a deal that give them billions, and then they turn around and lose that money. Then they go into Libya and take that money, and they're all feeding themselves these huge bonuses. And so it's all Tony Blair's involved. The bankers are involved. The the politics are, have merged with the banks, and they are this global establishment, this cartel that uses um, their influence to strong on their way into these economies. And I would imagine once they blow up Gaddafi, once they kill him, then of course they don't have to worry about any lawsuit. Uh, similarly, remember Saddam Hussein who started trading his oil in euros, they killed him. Uh, they don't like um, uh, the leader of Iran because he's talking about trading oil in euros. So of course he's been targeted for uh, some kind of action by military forces. So if you step out of line, uh, they will come in there and they will assassinate you. Uh, or they'll just come in there and start managing your money like they do for pension accounts all over America and Great Britain, losing billions and billions of dollars engaged in all their fraudulent trading. And it's all subsidized by the taxpayer. And any time they make a mistake, they strong arm the Congress, as was done in 2008, to give them billions and billions more of bailout money. So it's a mafia cartel. It's global. And Gaddafi is uh, the latest victim. Now, uh, Max, expanding on that, uh, we have the Senate uh, committee saying clearly Goldman Sachs lied again. Crimes have been committed. More subpoenas are going around. The problem is almost the entire Treasury uh, and federal government uh, at the management level, our former Goldman Sachs or J.P. Morgan or Bank of America or Wells Fargo uh, alumni, Citibank, uh, all of the usual suspects, the private Federal Reserve shareholders, and they've also put their people in over Greece, over Ireland, uh, over Iceland, over Portugal, and everywhere they have their people in, uh, they loot and steal everything. And we did learn 
uh, in Iceland. Of course, you were there a few years before this happened at, at a bar with them. They were bragging to you that over 90% of the debt was not owed by the people. It was owed by the bankers. And so this is coup d'etat by bankers, world government by bankers. But more and more people are standing up to them. You're about to go to Greece. Tell us about the resistance to these people mounting worldwide. Well, you see, in Greece, there's a protest today, the biggest so far. I just got news from somebody who was at the protest who said the numbers are closer to 250,000 in Parliament Square, and they are identifying clearly the enemy uh, as the bankers, and the government has been involved in really an unbelievably uh, atrocious act of what many in Greece are now calling treason. Uh, when he came to power, um, going back in 2009, he immediately sold uh, a, a billion in credit default swaps to his friends uh, in, in uh, Credit Swiss, Swiss banks, and uh, other cronies in Greece. Within five months, uh, when the IMF came in and said, well, we're going to have to start rearranging the furniture here, uh, though that particular trade was worth $27 billion. And so he knowingly uh, put... 20 billion or so uh, profits into the pockets of his cronies. Um, and that's 20 billion, if it were on the books of Greece today, would pay down most of their debt problems. So that is an act of treason by the folks uh, in Greece who have identified Papadreos, the prime minister, as a treasonous rat that they need to get out of. They're fighting against the Troika. And it just came out today, Alex, that. The advisors who are advising the Greek government now on the assets that need to be sold to pay the debt. And the debt, of course, was not originated in Greece. The, the debt was foisted on to the Greek people from outside, from the global banking cartel. Now, to settle the debt that the people themselves had nothing to do in, in incurring, uh, Deutsche Bank will get their state gambling monopoly. Credit Suisse will get the state lotteries. The Rothschilds and Barclays will get the road concessions. PricewaterhouseCooper will get the railway. France's BNP and Greece's National Bank are getting the airport concessions. And Lazard uh, are going to get the Greek trust and loan funds. So here you have a who's who of the global banksters. They're carving up the economy in Greece using the debt that was never there to begin with, that they just forced onto the people using inside cronyism with the prime minister involved, clearly, uh, to carve up the country and take those assets, and the country is, in effect, losing its sovereignty. And this is what we're seeing across Europe, and we're going to see it in the U.K., in the U.S., and North Africa, and uh, in the Mideast. This is the model. This is how people are losing their sovereignty. And it's happening in Greece. It is the roadmap. It's the model. That's it's right, Max. Stay there. Happening. Max, we've got to go to break. We're going to come back. And, and, and this is on record. I saw a few months ago the head of the Irish Central Bank said, we, we don't owe this money, but we want the foreign banks to own and run us. Incredible. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds?